Hello amazing indie gamers, this is Hazzy and today we're jumping into my indie game backlog with the game Astrologaster. The developer is Nyam Nyam, it, the release date was 2019. Also, it only has like 405 reviews and it's very positive, so I feel like since the reviews are so low, maybe not too many people have played this, but it's been in my backlog for a little while. So I'm excited to be playing this. Let's read the description and then we'll hop right in and see what we're getting ourselves into. Astrologaster is a comedy game set in Shakespeare's London. Play as Dr. Simon Foreman and treat his patients using astrology. A story-driven adventure based on a truly ridiculous story. So it sounds like we're getting ourselves into some high art comedy here. So I'm very excited to be doing this. And I like that it says here, Baudelaine Library, Oxford, present day. So I don't know if this is a if this is real and this is what this place looks like, but it's very fancy. Okay, let's jump in. Long ago in England, in 1592, there begins our tale, it. and all of it is true. Through all of London, bubonic late it spread, covering fucking weeping sores and leaving thousands dead. Okay, so I'm not rolling with a theme here because I know my last indie game backlog was also medieval about a doctor and the plague was happening at the time too. Um, but <laughs> like, I guess I have an interest in in that time period. From towns and cities, doctors they did flee, leaving their patients to die in misery. But one brave doctor stayed when all the cowards fled. My heart had been because he was too sick to leave his bed. Hey, I love this. This is this is so art. <laughs> like, I really like it. I love that you can turn the pages like a pop-up book and I, lo I love the look of the art here and the singing is excellent alas it is my final Music hour excellent i will surely die let's not I'm die too far gone to recover i just and got here the plague, there is no cure unless unless a cure might be found in the stars in the stars huh <laughs> Okay, so we are gonna use the Zodiac. How am I to be cured of the plague? I have the plague characterized by a loss of appetite, immoderate thirst, and pus-filled swellings behind the ears, in the armpits, and in the groin. These are symptoms of a fever provoked by excess sanguinity in the liver. Let me see now. According to the stars, the way to cure the plague is to treat the fever it provokes. Oh, can it be true? Might a disease so monstrous as the plague be cured by treating it as if it were an exceeding bad fever? Then I must use powerful herbs to bring the fever to crisis and break it. Let's do it. Let's break the fever. Let me see now. Angelica and dandelion for heat. Uh, borage to provoke sweating. Infuse We're desperate, them in wine. so we're going to try anything. Uh, strain and distill the mixture to produce a most powerful strong water. Glug, glug. Uh-oh. <laughs> wasn't a good thud. Did we die? <laughs> Huzzah! I am cured! Huzzah! <laughs> I shall now go forth with my miraculous strong water to cure all London of the plague! Okay. That's, a, that's getting a little excited about it. <laughs> we are now a doctor because we cured ourselves. <laughs> like, okay, curant is Simon Foreman, seen 13th of October, 1592 at 1600. How might I be cured of the plague? I judged my plague symptoms as being provoked by fever. I invented a new kind of strong, wor strong water to cure it. I shall cure Londoners of the plague. Yes, we shall do so. Which might not have been very smart. Huzzah! 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 
Huzzah. 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 <laughs> so yeah details are vague whatever and yeah we're just not a licensed doctor that's fine Okay, so let's find out what's wrong with Avis Allen. God give you good day, madam. How may I... Are you Mr. Foreman? Um, Mr. Simon Foreman, the, the doctor? I, madam, yes. I am indeed Dr. Simon Foreman. I bid you welcome to my consulting chambers. Uh, mistress, uh, mistress... Allen, mistress Avis Allen of Lambeth. Uh, pray tell me your age, if you please, madam. I am three and thirty years of age. And how might I do you service this day, Mr. Allen? Uh, pray describe your troubles to me. Well, the pain started full late last eve upon retiring to bed. Oh, not that I am in the habit of retiring so late. But my husband did desire a special supper of cold meats to celebrate and give thanks for... For... Uh, well, uh, in any case, it, it started in the night and it continued until dawning. That being the pain in my head. And the chundering. A moment whilst I make note of chundering. this. Chundering. Uh, headache and involuntary purging. Is that all? Okay, she's puking. Aye, that is all. And thinking on it, my complaint to seem most trifling. And you, you are doubtless busy with important cases. Oh, like the plague. Yea, verily, mayhap I should not have come after all. Okay, don't be so Good dramatic day, here. Dr. Foreman, I, I <laughs> don't be dramatic. You. Pardon me, for I have wasted Avis. your time. Pretty, do not go. Uh, for I assure you, madam, your case verily is important to me. And it is important to you, is it not, Mistress Allen? Else you would not have come this day. Well, uh, I... Let us consult the stars now then, shall we? What is the cause of Mistress Allen's suffering? Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Mistress Allen is suffering from evil digestion. This suggests a mild imbalance of black bile in the body. Mistress Allen's troubles have been provoked by anxious passions associated with her being with child. This indicates a disturbance of the mind. I think it's... I think she might be pregnant. You are with child, Mistress Allen. It was the reason for your celebration. No, I guess... I, I, I wonder... I, but how did you know I was just him? thinking it could I just... You, you could just child, be sick. Madam. There is a planet aligned with Scorpio at present. Scorpio being the constellation that rules over such matters. Uh, pray tell, how long has it been since your monthly courses? It has been 14 weeks since my courses, and yesterday I did feel the child quicken. So, indeed, t'was the cause for our celebration, as you say. <laughs> for I, I have been well, with Why didn't she tell see, us? But <laughs> it's never. And Mr. Allen and I do pray this one will be born alive. <laughs> there, there, dear lady. The presence of the planet Mercury in my chart does suggest you suffer from anxious passions on account of your condition. And given your ill-favoured history, I warrant twas the twin burdens of hope and fear that provoked your troubles last evening. Oh, I see. Pray take this flask of wine, madam. It has been infused with cloves, ginger root, and cinnamon. Drink of it each morning, and you should soon feel much improved. Verily. Oh, I will do as you advise. I thank ye heartily, sir. Fare you well, Dr. Foreman. Fare you well, Mistress Allen. <sighs> if she had told us that she was pregnant before we had died, we could have been like, oh, well, you're pregnant, but I guess we're not supposed to. Current did present with symptoms of headache and voluntary upward purging. I judge the curant as being with child. Me thinks the curant is most pleased with me for the reading I gave today. Seen on 28th November 1592 at 1300. We're getting closer to that. It was like that letter that we're trying to earn. I don't know why we're trying to earn. We haven't figured that out yet. Okay, so this is not a lucky man here. Oh, not lucky with sense and wisdom.
Okay, so maybe he's not very smart. <laughs> what day, sir? You are Simon Foreman, the physician, are you not? Uh, these are your rooms. Indeed, I am he, and well met, sir. Be it Thomas Blag, I have the honor of welcoming into my humble consulting chambers, the Dean of Rochester Cathedral. Indeed, tis I, Thomas Blag. Uh, though it is not upon church business that I come to you this day, tis upon a matter of my own that I require counsel. I have lately been offered some very lucrative investment opportunities, and, uh, well, it is said that God speaks to us through the stars, does he not? Indeed he does. Tis well known that astrology is but a conduit for the word of God, as interpreted using scientific means. And now, these investments of which you speak, pray tell of them, if you please. Two merchant ships will shortly set sail on very lucrative trading expeditions. I do not possess the coin to invest in both. Hence, I must choose between them. And I must choose very wisely indeed. Mm, for sea voyages are most perilous. And if my ship were to founder or be captured by pirates, I would lose my entire investment. Aye, forsooth. It would be most lamentable. To say nothing of the poor souls who might lose their lives. Who are, naturally, the uh, greater of my concerns. I, I don't believe him. And whither might these ships be bound? The first is bound for the Spice Islands of the East. Tis a voyage to be undertaken by a ship named the Conquering Cherub. The other is the Pride of Yarmouth. She is to bring back sugar from the Americas. Have you now the information you require? Then, perchance, you may divine for me upon which of these two ships our Lord God has bestowed his divine blessing. Aye, Dean Blag, we may now consult the stars. Should Thomas Blag invest in the voyage of the conquering cherub, or that of the pride of Yarmouth? Okay, so we have to decide between two ships. We're going to leave it up to the stars. I don't think this is the best way to do this, but that's what we're going to do. The ship's name should evoke a child who is victorious in battle. House of Children. Okay. Legs investments in a training voyage will result in a change of fortune for him. Represents a change of fortune. The ship's name should invoke a woman who partakes who partakes in a marriage. Um, I'm not sure. Let's go with this one. You chose A. The stars advise you to invest in the ship named the Conquering Cherub. I see. And why is that? Well, I have calculated that at this very hour, upon this very day, the planet Mars and the constellation Scorpio do both dwell in that part of the sky we call the House of Children. And, as it happens, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. Hence, we may say, we say that so. Mars is presently exalted. I know nothing about what Mars he's talking about. Mars has been exalted by Scorpio, you say? And what might that mean? When exalted, Mars represents victory. And so, with victory in the house of children, we may read this as a victorious child. Ergo, the conquering cherub. Ah, I see. Uh, for a cherub is a, is a kind of child, is it not? In sooth, I do find the science of astrology verily fascinating. <laughs> Me too, because I, I have no idea you, what's Dr. happening. Foreman. You have been most helpful. <laughs> okay, next page. Uh, Querent is Thomas Blog, 17th December, 1592-1800. The Querent did wish to know which of the two trading expeditions would make the better investment. I did advise the Curant to invest in the voyage of the Conquering Cherub. He thinks the Curant was pleased with with me for the reading I gave today. Okay, so Emma seems like a shy, scared 
lady, but I do like her dress. Let's see what's going on. Tomorrow, sir. Pray tell, are these the consulting chambers of Simon Foreman, Doctor of Astrology and Physic? Indeed, tis I, Doctor Simon Foreman. And your name, madam? Emma Sharp of Shoreditch, sir. Five and twenty years of age. Welcome, Miss Sharp. And how may I do you service this day? Well, tis a trifle delicate. A man has asked me to be his wife. A dear, kind man. But, but, <gasps> I fear you will think me cold, Dr. Foreman. There, there, madam, whatever is the matter? Well, he is exceeding advanced in years. I do worry he may not be long for the world, and if he were to die, I do not think I could bear it. <gasps> Verily, I would not. Indeed, methinks I would rather not marry him at all. Am I very heartless, Dr. Foreman? Nay, not in the least, madam. Your fears are most reasonable. The man in the winter of his life is indeed more likely to die. I assure you, madam, it yeah. is a medical fact. But methinks you wish to know whether this man be afflicted with a grave health condition, do you not? To wit, any ailment that might soon prove fatal? Forsooth I do. That is my question precisely. Why, Dr. Foreman, tis as if you have a gift for reading minds. <laughs> uh, merely no, the gift we of have logical astrology. surmise, madam. Let us see whether a judgment of the stars may calm your fears. Uh, does Mr... Uh, what was your gentleman's name? Mr. George Middleton, a wool merchant. <clears throat> does Mr. Middleton have any ailments that might hasten his death? Okay, so we got three options here. This reminds me of being like in middle school and making those like paper fortune teller. Like they look like, I don't know, these like you had to fold them into like a diamond shaped thing. And then you would like, I don't know if it was spell something out and then you would open up part of the paper thing and then it would tell you what the fortune is. That's what this reminds me of. And that's what we're doing for helping everybody. Like I thought we were just going to be about health, but we're about everything. So that's the way it is. Mr. Middleton has been bewitched. The enchantment may prove fatal. Uranus in retrograde. This suggests a mild enchantment cast by a witch. Suggests the possibility of death. Mr. Middleton suffers from dropping down of the pits. <laughs> Characterized by involuntary urination is exasperated when combined with fear of heights. Okay. <laughs> like... Mr. Middleton suffers from a cardiac passion, a condition that may end in death. This represents an imbalance of phlegm. The illness cannot be cured. Suggests a mild imbalance, imbalance of black bile. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Remember, we're playing. I don't know what's going to happen. This is a blind playthrough, so I don't. I may not pick the right answer. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's between, because I think he's old, right? So he probably has something wrong. He could have something wrong with his heart. I think this is less likely, because it's saying, like, he's been bewitched. So it's like he's got a spell cast on him. I don't want to go that route. So I think I'm going to go with Leo, ruler of the heart. I am full of sorry, madam. But the stars give heavy news. Mr. Middleton suffers from a cardiac passion. Indeed, his heart may stop at any moment. He must avoid anything that might alarm or trouble his vital spirits. One shock could be enough to kill him. Oh, whoa, alas, poor Mr. Middleton. I thank you for your kind understanding, Dr. I wonder Foreman, if she's going to marry him. And for your discretion in this matter. I will at once to my family go and beseech them not to make me accept Mr. Middleton's proposal. God give you a good day, Dr. Foreman. Emma Sharp. Granted, wish to know whether a man she wishes to marry does suffer from any grave health conditions. I did advise the curant that Mr. Middleton suffers from a cardiac passion and that he could die at any moment. Methinks the curant was pleased with me for the reading gave today. She was seen on the 14th, September, 1593 at 900. Okay, no singing. I wanted more singing. I love the singing. I love the music in this game. 
public notice. Beware, is the man treating you a qualified licensed doctor? Um, <laughs> we're not, but we have the stars on our side. London has lately been impromptuned by lowborn charlatans claiming the title of doctor. These men have never attended university and therefore cannot be trusted. Any man found to be practicing medicine without a medical license shall be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Dr. Richard Smith, President, College of Physicians. Murdering How dare! You're saying we don't slay? <laughs> They slay, we don't slay. <laughs> we don't want to go to jail. What is the meaning of this warning being put about by the College of Physicians? Do they mean to do me harm? It is true that I do not have a medical license. It's true. What am I to do? Mayhap the stars will advise me. Okay, let's find out what the stars tell us. The authority the licensed doctors of London hold is primarily owing to their wealth and privilege. There is much that they do not know about by Fisic. Present. This represents ignorance. Okay. The College of Physicians is making war against me. If I am to become the best doctor in London, I must find a way to end this war. By is ending a war. Church of England can help me, for the Archbishop of Canterbury has a special power to grant medical licenses. This represents a religious authority, the head of the church. Find out what this one is. I must use my brilliant mind to forge strong relationships with my curants. The solution involves being sensitive to the needs of my curants. Okay, I think A is the way to go. Mm, I see. These doctors have waged war against me, and the only way to stop them is to obtain a medical license. And in the house of religion... Ah, yes. A reminder that the archbishop has the power to grant such licenses. Mayhap I will one day find a way to petition him for one. In the meantime, I must serve my querents well. For if I do, they will doubtless favor me with letters of recommendation I can use to petition the University yes, of Cambridge to grant me a license. Okay, current to Simon Foreman, 14th September, 1593-1300. I did wish to know how to protect myself from the dark intentions of the College of Physicians. Dark intentions? It's so funny because back then it's like... Anything you don't like, it's like, ooh, what evil is this? What dark intentions is going on? The stars did advise me to petition the Archbishop of Canterbury for a medical license. I may also receive one if my curants, whom I must serve well, give me letters of recommendation. With such letters, I may convince the University of Cambridge to grant me a license. We didn't give ourselves... I guess we can't give ourselves a letter of recommendation points. <laughs> I wish... This man at the door who we've not seen before. Who is this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who is come to inquire dressed in such strange attire? Ah, good day to you, sir. Oh, I see you're having some difficulties. No, uh, William, uh, fetch my guest a chair. Uh, no, no, he's good. I am just a little stiff. As you wish. Uh, Mr. Uh... Signor Riccardo Ferraro. I am a gentleman of Venezia, come to make a trade in London. Uh, Venice? Uh, uh, it is a fine away. city, I hear. Ish. And <laughs> how may I do you service this day, Signor Ferraro? I am come with una problema medicale, and you are most great dottore who does cure all a London, eh? You cure a Ferraro too, see? Forsooth, I will seek to do so, Signor. Forsooth. Pray, describe your complaints, if you please. Uh, is burning when I make the water. Pain during urination. See, si. and is pain down here. Molto pain. 
and pain in the lower back. It sounds now, like kidneys. Let us see what the stars can tell us. What ails Signor Ricardo Ferraro? Usually we have kidney pain is down lower back. I have pain during urination and in my lower back. What ails me? This represents an imbalance of yellow bile in the body. The Signor Ferro suffers the gout, which is caused by hot, dry humor seeping into the joints of the foot. That does not make sense for this. Signor Ferro suffers from stones of the kidney. See, I think it's definitely this. This disease can, uh, can occasion loss of appetite, severe pain in the kidney area, vomiting, and difficulty passing urine. Libra ruler of the kidney. Signor Ferrero has dysentery, characterized by pain in the bowels, faintness, and oily stool. Um, I'm going to go with this. I think it's kidneys. Hmm. It is a case of Just stones remember, in the kidney. remember, I've never I played this, so uh, I'm guessing. Not, <laughs> I will give you an ounce of my strong water to dislodge We're them. We're just going to follow it wherever Drink it goes. Drink this entire flask when you rise at dawn tomorrow. You may then expect to evacuate the stones by way of your privy member within just a few hours. Ah, your famous strong water. This water is said to cure the plague, eh? Hmm. I thank you, Signor Foreman. And now Ricardo Ferraro bids you good day. Okay, then. Current Ricardo Ferraro, seen on the 27th of November, 1593, 900. The current... Did present with pain in the lower back and during urination. I did diagnose stones in the kidney and prescribed a flask of strong water. He thinks the curant was a little pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. We've got 10 points in the, towards the letter of recommendation. Awkward princess. <laughs> Uh, okay, so they're saying she's not very pretty, and she lacks finesse, and she's awkward. She's ah, not... well met, okay, so Mr. Avis Salon. is just kind of uh, awkward. Pray tell, the last time I saw you, you were with child, methinks. Uh, pray tell, how fares... I'd rather not talk about that, if you please. Oh, I see. What happened? I am full. Sorry, madam. Nothing. What I'm come upon... This? <laughs> this is awkward. I the matter that pardon, brings... Madam. I pray thee, madam... Say on. I'm come about the new law. I know not what to do, and I would have counsel. You are in trouble with the law, madam? Nay, at least not yet, but my neighbours have begun to remark unkindly upon my absences, uh, my Sunday absences from church. I'm afeard one of them may soon denounce me. Ah, it is the act against recusants you speak of, the law that obliges Catholics to attend church and take the English sacrament. You are of the... Catholic faith, then, I take it? Aye, a Catholic. Uh, but as well, a, a law-abiding woman and a full loyal subject of the Queen. Long may she reign. I do not doubt it, madam. But to take the Protestant sacrament? Oh, tis heresy! So says the Pope in Rome. I risk being damned to hell if I do it, Dr. Foreman. Verily, I find myself in a most terrible bind. I see. Damned if you do, yet condemned if you do not. A cruel bind indeed. Well, let us see if the stars may untangle it for us. Should Mistress Avis Allen attend Protestant church services? Well, if it's the law. Let's see. I'm Catholic. Should I obey the law and attend Protestant church services? Some have the wrong impression of the Allens' wealth and are envious. Mistress Allen's problem is her female neighbors. I mean, it could be. Avis must remain strong in her Catholic faith for when the queen dies, her successor may revert to England back to Catholic. Yeah, maybe, but maybe not. Mistress Allen risks getting in trouble with the law and being punished by the authorities. There may be a creative solution for appeasing the Pope in Rome whilst also honoring England's Protestant legacy. It is Mistress Allen's duty to cooperate. I'm not sure. I kind of like this one. It's a lot more simple. That one seems like there's a lot of threads going on. Let's go with this. Dear lady, 
if your neighbours consider speaking against you, it would be on account of envy. Envy? But Mr Allen and I have not been blessed with... I have not had the same fortune as other women. And to be sure, we are not wealthy. Uh, yes, of course. Hence, you must disabuse your neighbours of their ill-founded notions. Yes, don't worry Indeed, about it. you must have them believe that you are, in truth, most poor. Then I am to have my neighbours pity me. Precisely so, madam. For if they were to pity you, they would never think of reporting you to the authorities. Ah, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, Nay, they yeah. Would say, I'm glad I came up with that. See <laughs> how low poor Mistress Allen has come. She has no gown fine enough for church, so she finds an excuse not to come by pretending she is a Catholic. Oh, I see. Uh, that, then that's I must good. wear coarser clothes Thanks, Simon. As well. We're good. <laughs> In truth, it will not be agreeable to be talked of so. But nay, it is naught but my vanity. And if a woman must sacrifice her comeliness for the sake of her soul, so be it. It is but a small price to pay. Oh, but be assured, madam, you would still be most... Methinks you would appear no less comely in poorer attire. Oh, Dr. Foreman, you, what, you are we blush. hitting on Avis? Forgive me, dear what lady. It is not my intention to occasion you any. Madam, would you care to see my collection of Venetian glassware? <laughs> I think I would. Indeed, I would like that very well. Okay, so we're flirting with Avis now. <laughs> All righty then. Curant Avis Allen, between 10th January 1594-1500. The curant did wish to know whether she would comply with the law and attend Protestant church services, thereby betraying her Catholic faith. I did advise the curant to avoid going to church by pretending she was ashamed by the poverty of her attire. Methinks the curant was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Quitus post consultatio. 